In the world in which we live, the building, the building that we come and worship in plays an extremely pivotal part. When you can do everything online, from shopping to banking, the amount of opportunities we have as a community to interact with each other and to go out and form deeper, more meaningful relationships is diminishing. So whether it's on Wednesday nights or Sunday mornings for worship, Tuesday mornings or over lunch on Thursdays for Bible study, or the countless other gatherings and activities that we come to this place and take part in, this is the place. This is the place where we come to form, have the opportunity to form those relationships. This is where we come to reset our focus on our own faith. So to make sure that this building can continue to be that place, there are some critical things that need to happen. In addition to that, there are also some opportunities to enhance our current space so that each of us can grow deeper in our own faith and also welcome new people the opportunity to develop their faith. So let's start with the most critical of needs, our HVAC system. Joel gave me a tour of it a couple weeks ago, and you guys saw it on the video. To me, it was kind of like walking through the bottom of the Titanic. Um, it's that old. They were great systems 40 years ago. They just ran their course. After re our remodel that we did over here on this part of the building, we switched this third of the building over to natural gas. And so the plan would be to switch the other two thirds of the building over to natural ga gas as well. The great news with this is that this investment will actually pay for itself. So our, our old systems right now are, are dual fuel. And so heating oil and electricity. And we get cheaper electrical rates because of the ability for them to switch us over to fuel. That would be great if our fuel burners would actually work, which they don't. So we're 100% electricity right now. So right now, this is our last year for a grace period of cheaper electrical rates. Otherwise, they skyrocket. skyrocket. And so the savings to switch over to 100% natural gas will actually pay for itself in just over 20 years. The other critical need is fire safety. We've been non-compliant for years, and with the things that we're going to be doing to the building, this will actually be a requirement. We were actually quite surprised with how reasonable the cost is to put a sprinkler system throughout all of our property. But even if this wasn't a requirement, if you think about it, this should be something that we would want to do to protect this place. Especially considering that a couple feet away, a point set up burst into flames a couple years ago. So when we purchased the space next door to Holy Cross, there was some uncertainty, myself included, on how all the space that we would have would be would be would would and could be used. What we are finding out is that there's a tremendous need and demand for space like we have in the community in which we serve. Unfortunately, because of how inefficient that space is, with it being one large room, we've had to be very selective on the amount of use by outside groups. By adding the three large classrooms in the front of the fellowship hall, and then by enhancing the education wing, we're not only going to be able to improve our own ministry plans, but we can start saying yes more often to the right fit from the outside groups. Because we all know that when we invite people into our own, our home, into this place of worship, that we allow the Holy Spirit to start doing God's work. So speaking of the work of what the Holy Spirit has done, I think it's always helpful to, to look back at where we've come. Uh, when we embarked on our first appeal nine years ago, some of you guys weren't here yet, other of you guys have been members like I have for quite a while, but we were busting at the seams in our education. We couldn't afford a second pastor, our staff, which was basically all part-time, we were able to offer no benefits to them. And we could not even fathom how we were going to pay for what at that time was going to be an expansion with Holy Cross Catholic Church. Well, we had a successful appeal and all of those needs were covered. Fast forward a couple years later, about five years ago, we, we set out on our second appeal. We got the news that Holy Cross was leaving, so it was either acquire the space that they were leaving or not have any control who our, who our uh, neighbors were going to be on this in our, in our property. Again, a successful appeal, the building was acquired, and the crisis was averted. Now, I was on church leadership that whole time, and it may seem like we had things all under control, and we knew exactly how it was going to end up, it was going to all work out fine. Newsflash, we didn't, we took leaps of faith, trusting that if our hearts were in the right place, that the, and the vision that we had for this community was going to come to fruition, then we needed to take those steps. And I'm really glad that we did. Because if you look at what we've accomplished and where we sit today, we have a thriving and growing church body 
We have amazing staff, a flourishing global mission partner, and most recently, our property is going to be home to 30 new women and children at the place that they can call home with the Grace Card. All of that started and was possible because of members like you and I saying that this place, this holy place mattered to them and that they were willing to commit their resources to allow God's work to be done. Now I'm an optimist, but what we've been able to accomplish far surpasses what even I thought was possible. So by making the changes that we've outlined, we are assuring that this place is going to be able to continue to be the place that our kids can call their faith home for many more years to come. And by adding things like the food pantry, we're going to be touching lives that I don't think you and I know what lives we're going to touch. So now's the time. Join me in our campaign to give and love like Jesus. Whether your pledges are big or whether they're small, we need all of them. And if we all contribute, these plans will come, become a reality and we'll be able to continue to change lives far into the future. Thank you.